back to the homestead kitchen. Do you know what I'm working on? I am getting around. It's been a few days since I made our cowboy or cowgirl candy, those candy jalapenos. And this jelly fixing has just been sitting in our fridge. Apparently making a syrup because that is what it's like, a really thick syrup. It's almost jelly already. So I'm going to be making that jelly today. Finally, I don't know when I'll finally get this video up, but it's time. So I'm measuring out six cups of this marinade. This is my first time ever making any kind of jelly, so I'm kind of excited about it, but also a little bit nervous that I'm not going to get it to set up. So the number one thing I have been reading about jelly and seeing is to never double the batches. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I guarantee you if I'm making jelly on a regular basis, I'm going to be doubling the batches and probably dealing with the consequences. But for the sake of my first time trying to make jelly, I am just going to uh, follow advice and use just six cups of the brine. I've probably got about nine cups here, so if this goes well, I can always make the rest later. If you missed our video on the candied peppers, we actually used more than just jalapenos. It was a lot of spicy peppers. I will go ahead and I will link it above if you want to watch that video first. But today I'm going to be making the jelly. I've got six cups of the marinade to start with and right now I am just making sure I don't have any seeds in it. Um, I don't think this really is a deal breaker for me so I don't know if this is for safety or what but again first time just following the directions. Um, so I'm getting all the seeds out and later I'll figure out if this is um, super important because I don't know or if you do know will you leave a comment below is this a safety factor or just kind of a pretty factor as far as jelly goes. Our favorite jelly or jam is raspberry jalapeno so I'm thinking this is going to give a lot of the same flavors with the sweetness and the spice um, and we'll probably use it over cream cheese or for snacks and appetizers and things like that throughout the year. All right, I think I got most of it. It's kind of like honey. But it's not that sweet though. All right, set this aside. I decided to transfer to a new pot because if you were watching my last video, this thing just it boiled right over the pot and I just have a sticky mess. Um, so I kind of wanted to get this cleaned up and out of the way and start off fresh and hopefully not boil it over this time. So I'm using a smaller pot because that's usually what keeps it from boiling over, right? So I'm getting this on the stove and I'm going to get it started and dump in my pectin. My stove and oven have definitely seen better days, but so far she's holding up until I can, you know, Maybe get one of those like French stoves at the Lacanche or something. Dreams, right? <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to be using Sure Gel. This says for use in less or no sugar needed recipes. It said to make sure I got that type of variety. And I'm going to be using the whole 1.75 ounce package. And hopefully it does well. So I'm just going to dump this in and mix it up. So a lot of times I struggle with this kind of stuff, like trying so hard to eat healthy and not have um, processed foods and then I put this kind of stuff in our food and I struggle with if that's the right thing or not to do. So no one else ever feel that way. Looks good so far. While this is going, I am going to get my jars heated up because they are going to be water bath. I'm using my new electric um, Presto canner, which I have been loving getting lots of food put up on the shelf thanks to that. Um, so I'm gonna get it out to get my jars warmed up in it. So one thing that has been a real change using an electric pressure canner when it comes to water bathing, I always need to have a pot of hot water boiling on the stove ready to go when it comes time to do my jars because I'm actually heating them up here in about three quarts of water. So I don't have it full enough to cover the jars. So. We need some water boiling. 
I already think I would uh, change how I would do this recipe. I would start with the water boiling and the jar boiling and then get the jelly going. Usually other things have so many steps. This jelly sure doesn't. I am switching burners because I want this to get going. Just reading somebody posting about the lecture canner and saying that it was really intimidating and they were too nervous to try it for the first time. And I found that really sad because well, they don't even know what they're missing out on yet. Um, this has really, I really do think it is going to completely change our lifestyle and make a lot of things a lot easier for us. Um, right now I am just adding three quarts of water to our canner. <coughs> There's a line right inside the pot so I know when to stop. And this tray sits on top. Has anybody else had this issue? Um, I did actually contact customer support and they said it's rare, but it happens um, that there's some discoloring on this. And apparently it has to do with our water. So what I had done is I had um, tried right off the bat using vinegar in here thinking our water was super hard and our water isn't really that hard. So all I did was I corroded the heck out of my rings and my lids. And I didn't want that. I'm just making sure the bottom of the pot is really dry. All the mechanics and things are on the bottom of here. It's so much like a pressure cooker. If you've ever used an electric pressure cooker, it's so similar. Um, I think that's what really helped me not be so intimidated by it is just how similar it is. I've got my jars washed up and I'm just adding um, warm water. I figured out that I need to fill my half pint um, pretty much to the top where they start floating around. And I would rather add too many in here and not need them um, than not have enough. I can fit seven half pints in here. The recipe is for six half pints. But here's the thing. If I've got a little bit left over, now I can throw it in a jar. And if that one's not even full, I can throw it in the fridge or something. It's not going to go to waste. If I don't use it, I can dump out the water. And the jar has been, you know, just heated up. I already took the regulator off the top, off the back here. It just pops on and off. And when I'm water bathing, I don't use it at all. It's only for pressure canning. This goes down and locks this in place. And then I start making my selections. Um, I'll zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I don't know if you can see this too well, um, but I'm going to turn this dial. It says pressure can or boiling water can. So boiling water can is that water bath. And I just select the middle button and then I select my time. It has to be at least five minutes. This is just 10 minutes. What's really nice about this is the time is 10 minutes regardless. I normally have to up my boiling water times five minutes for elevation and I don't with the electric canner. I did not know that at the beginning, um, so now I do. Then I click this and it tells me to insert my jars. I already did that part. Um, so I click, oh, I click the button again. I think you can click this one or play and it says warm. Um, so it's just warming up my jars and then it'll let me know when it's ready for the jelly to go in. Um, I'm not going to get my jelly heated up too high until I know it's ready because it can sit here with... This is so zoomed in. Eee! Can you see me better now? Alright, so I'm not going to get my um, jelly up to boiling just yet. I want these to be warm first because they can sit in here warming for a while. Um, but my jelly can't sit there boiling for a while. So, anyways. While I'm waiting for my jars to warm up and my water to boil on the stove. I'm getting my area set up with everything I need for canning. I've got my rings all washed and ready. I did wash a few of the flats. We no longer boil these. Uh, flats are made differently than they used to be. The rubber is um, different and you're actually gonna have more failed seals if you boil them. So I wash them in hot soapy water per the recommendation. And I've got a few washed up and then I just always set aside extra um, to wash up as I go. I've got my sink full of some hot soapy water so that I can wash these up if I need them. But I don't really wanna waste these brand new um, flats by washing them and then not using them. I've got my, what's this called? Is it a type of tongs? My grabber, grab them. Put them in, put them out, pull them out. Um, a measuring cup. Unfortunately, I just dirtied my one cup measuring cup with this. I could probably wash it a little bit and use it, but I'm not going to. Um, and the other one I'm using for espresso right now, so. But 
Um, my two cup measuring cup will work for scooping and I'll probably use a ladle as we get closer to the end so I can get that out. Um, maybe. I've got my funnel so I don't make too big of a mess. One thing I always forget is to have a wet rag ready for wiping the rims. Some people use vinegar on their rims. I just use um, warm water. And I think as soon as uh, this is heated up, which normally doesn't take very long, it's already getting pretty warm to the touch, and my water's boiling on the stove, I'll get that jelly going. My, I almost called it my Instant Pot. My pressure canner just beeped, telling me the jars are warm. My water on the stove is born, boiling, so let's get this jelly boiling. The recipe I'm using, I will link below. Um, but basically, I want to get this to a rolling boil. I've got a spoon and then I've also got a thermometer. It says to get it to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, as soon as I get it to that rolling boil, I am going to start um, putting it right in my hot jars. This is all already rolling boil. I also got a wet rag. This is just such a sticky mess so that I can keep things clean and nice and tidy as I'm working. Here goes nothing. Last time I boiled it over, like right after I had stirred it, like a second after I put the lid on. So I'm just gonna keep a good eye on it this time. All right, so just to show you, it goes from like nothing to like full rapid boil. This thing was not doing a thing a few seconds ago. And yeah, we're gonna turn that down before I boil it over. Um, just double check that we've got the right temperature. It's at about 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Get this to turn on. I'm just using my meat thermometer. I need something better to check the temperature, but there it. All right, that is about exactly perfect. It's like I forgot to put my rig. Just wanted it on my hand. Just turn it off. I'm going to actually keep this covered while I am waiting to fill jars because I do not, I do not want it to cool down too much. Get this opened up. It says fill jars. I'm right on my electric canner. I unlock it, I twist this, I take it off. Lots of safety measures. This is something different than my Instapot. I always hook my Instapot lid on the side. This one I kind of dump it and then set it off to the side. All right, pull my jars out. Dump them. And then this is kind of nice. I'm just gonna fill them right away. I might actually just use the ladle, I think. Too hard. All right. It's going. The head space on here is a quarter inch. It is so liquidy, I wasn't really expecting that. I'm not sure what I was expecting. I mean, it won't be like jelly yet. Okay, so a quarter inch is really quite a small amount. I got it there. jars that Matt had picked up. I kind of like the lids because um, they don't have any, it's really hot, they don't have any text already on them 
and I'm a little type A and my text has to be facing the same as the front of the jar and all those things and there's no text on these jars or these lids so um, I don't have to worry about that. So I'm putting it right back in here so it's staying nice and warm which is really nice. Next one ready. So make sure when you are putting your rings on your jars that they are just finger tight and this is because um, you actually want um, I'm very good at what's the word you want some siphoning to take place um, while it's cooking it sounds really silly but you really do and um, cooling as well, kind of getting all that oxygen out um, so that your food doesn't actually spoil. So some siphoning, okay and normal. A lot, maybe not so much. That usually just means, well there's a couple reasons, but one could be that um, you let it cool too long or not properly. I know I was guilty in the past um, of my stovetop canner leaving it overnight because it took so long to get back down to pressure and now I just know better. Don't do that. <laughs> we actually had one year where our entire batch of venison just had this awful taste and it didn't seem like anything was wrong with it but it just it was just kind of bad and now I've learned uh, I'm pretty sure that's all I did was I left it in my canner overnight. So it's funny the things that I don't like about this canner. There's very few, but it really is funny the things I don't like. Overall, I love it. Um, it's completely changed how I do things. I never would have made this jelly. I would have never even attempted it probably. Not that it's very difficult. and. If my jelly doesn't set up, I'm not worried about it. I'll just use this as a marinade, but. <clears throat> I wouldn't have attempted it just because um, it seems like so much piddly little work. And with this thing, it just seems like, oh, another thing I can throw in quick. I actually, we just finished lunch when I started this and Eli's the only one home with us today, so Matt's downstairs working, Eli's taking a nap, I'm quick getting this going, and as soon as it's going, I'm going back to work. I never would have been able to do that, um, even a water bath on the stovetop, I wouldn't have been able to just go back to work while I was doing it. I would have had to stay up here and stay in the kitchen, and um, that keeps me from doing things like this, especially uh, this time of year, as, you know, chaos ensues, we're getting close to Christmas time, and is the season. Okay, I think this is the fifth jar. So it said it would make six jars. I think it would make at least six jars and I have seven ready just in case. Looks like some of that mustard seed snuck through. I don't stress so much if my jar itself is dirty when I put it in because I'm going to be washing all my jars when I'm done. Um, not right away. After they have cooled for a while, I'm going to uh, make sure they get washed and cleaned up. Okay, I think it's going to be just about six jars. Might throw this just on some meat later. It's just a tiny, tiny amount left. Um, this actually, the smell of this, it's really funny. It reminds me of, um, gosh, something we haven't had in forever. Um, back when we were butchering um, pigs with family, we always got ham steak, and I had never been familiar with it before that, but it literally was like a, a thick piece of ham, I guess is a good description, just a thick slab of ham. 
and we would use that for kind of our last minute meals when we um, didn't have anything pulled out to make we would take the ham steak out and we would um, mix brown sugar and mustard and this was from Matt's mom Matt's mom had shared that with us brown sugar and mustard together and just slather the ham steak with it and we would cut that up and have it you know with whatever we're having potatoes or veggies or whatnot and yeah this is what that smells like but I guess it really does have that like cooked caramelized type sugar and the mustard seed in here that's all I can gather that why it reminds me of that it's kind of funny I'm not gonna wash this last lid because I am not going to um, water bath it I'm just gonna put this straight in the fridge maybe it'll harden up jelly like um, I've never made a freezer jam but I assume it would I assume it would be pretty similar um, but not entirely sure so I've got these in here. I need to make sure I get some water covering them. So this is one of the few other things I don't love about this. I am extremely short, so this is probably not an issue for most people. And my kitchen counters actually happen to be extremely tall. But I can't just take a pot over here and dump this in here, water, boiling water in here easily. So that's where these come in handy. The kids' step stools, they use these um, when we have pizza movie night in the living room. They're their little um, spot to sit. And they just use them helping around the house if they're putting dishes away or things. But I can't reach up here easily, so I actually stand on a stool usually to dump some water in. So using the stool gives me a little bit more control over what I'm doing. And I just want to dump about an inch or two above the jelly jars just so they're covered. Perfect. <laughs> I lid. Turn. Lock till I'm ready. Now that it's going, it says it is heating. It usually beeps before it starts counting down for 10 minutes, which is really nice. So I like to use this little bit of time while it's heating back up. Does that make sense? Um, to just kind of clean up my kitchen and everything and then when it beeps I know I have exactly 10 minutes before it's done plus cool down um, so I can go work like I said I'll have those 10 minutes to work so I'm gonna get this cleaned up real quick I wonder if I can clean up the kitchen before it beeps I think I can I'm not entirely sure I've got a lot going on I think I did have that. It's not done yet though. What else needs to get done? <laughs> Is anyone else suffering from copious amounts of sugar still in their house left over from Halloween? It's insane. The kids are still slowly eating from it. Oh, there it goes. All right. I'm trying to deal with this new stand that Matt bought. It is huge. I'll have to I'll have to take this camera off and show you. Like it is so gigantic here. I'm gonna do it. You see that thing? It's gigantic. It's not even all the way up. It is it is huge. It is way taller than me, and I'm trying to get used to dragging it around. It's really funny because it's way easier. Um, I'm gonna slowly spin around. It's way easier to film things like inside my pot, um, but it's just something new to work with. So figuring all that out. All right, now that the timer, eh, hold on. Now that the timer's counting down, it's at nine minutes. So I know I have at least nine minutes before I need to come up here. Um, with the boiling water canner, I don't have to worry about the regulator, so that's super helpful. Set a timer for nine minutes. You missed the beep. Um, but after the 10 minute timer went down, there was a cooling time and that went down. It beeped, says it's done. And I just double check by looking at um, my regulator here. If it's past the green part at all, up a, not the regulator, the regulator is back here. There's a little valve between 
the green lock and this handle and if it's past the green at all then I just wait I've never actually had this problem but this is just what it recommends um, before I open it but the really cool thing about when I turn this green thing is I'm literally making a hole in the top while the lids still being locked on I almost wish my instant pot had this just for a little reassurance that when I turn this and I open it now I have a big open hole so if there was any pressure it's instantly gone water off all right and I'm gonna pull my chilies out without tipping them I put them right in front of our coffee pot but I only have to leave these about 12 hours before I check them so if in 12 hours um, they look good I'll wash them up take the rings off and I will store them in the cupboard hopefully they've made some jelly and not just a uh, syrup but if that's the case ah, I just dropped that on my foot oh my gosh If they don't uh, gel up a little bit, then at least uh, I guess I'll have some more marinade. So I'm going to unplug this. They also recommend that you always unplug it from the base, um, which I'm not always the best about because I don't want to lose my cords. And sometimes I'll let this cool down right in here. Other times I will dump it hot. I'm just going to let it cool down because I just dripped boiling water on my foot and it really hurt. Um, a lot of times what I will do is the ring here um, inside I will take this out once it's cooled down a little bit and I'll scrub it with um, warm soapy water just so I don't get a stench um, to my pressure canner I did notice after one of our batches that I could almost smell um, one of the things that came up much like an instapot I really think just keeping that all clean um, helps a ton so that you don't have that as a problem I did set first jar that I didn't can just sitting over here it's kind of syrupy consistency this is the one that didn't water bath and I'm gonna put that one in the fridge so hopefully we'll know if we have some jelly soon uh, thanks for uh, watching with me and see if I can pick one of these up helping me make some uh, candied pepper jelly today <laughs> brine jelly <laughs> thanks for watching guys Bye.